Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of The Point Podcast. And with it being Easter week, I want to talk to you about something that a lot of people just never really want to discuss. But to kind of set the stage, let's make our way to Matthew 16. Now, in Matthew 16, Jesus literally has a shift because from this point forward in the book of Matthew, he's making his way to the cross. In Matthew 16, Christ has taken his 12 disciples from Capernaum, 38 miles north of the Sea of Galilee, to a place called Caesarea Philippi. Now, why did Christ take his disciples 38 miles north to say what he's about to say? Because it was the most pagan place in the planet at that time. Matthew 16, verse 13 says this. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Now, this is, this is catch this. He's asking them, who does the world say that I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? See, there's a big difference in what the world says about Christ and then what we believe about Christ. But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for, flood and, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now, he goes on to say in verse 18, and this is big. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What's he saying when the gates of hell shall not prevail against it? We win. It may look like we're not winning right now. Okay, we may be losing the battle right now, but I can promise you, we are going to win the war. And then he hands them the keys to the kingdom, referring to, I'm giving you what you need to finish the job that we have started. He then tells them that he is about to die, that we're going to go to Jerusalem, I'm going to die, man's going to, and this is where Peter takes him to the side and says, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, that will never happen. And, of course, we've talked about this past couple Sundays. That's when Christ said, get behind me, Satan. Well, again, that was because Peter and the disciples were thinking, we want you to stay here with us. And he's like, you're thinking of the world. You're not thinking like the kingdom of God. Now, said all that to get to where I want to go right now. Verse 24. Jesus looks at his 12 disciples and he says, then Jesus told the disciples, if anyone, who's the anyone? That's all of us. If anyone would come after me, I'll catch this, come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. What does it mean, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me? You need to understand that in the first century, crucifixion was one of the absolute worst death possible the romans had become masters of crucifying you and dragging your death out and making you miserable as long as possible as an example is if you mess up this is what happens to you but during the first century crucifixion was also thought of as discipleship it was a metaphor for discipleship it it's it's us becoming more like christ so we have to deny ourselves pick up our cross and follow him. Now, make sure you catch this. Denying ourselves is different for everybody. What you may need to deny yourself of is something that's not a problem for me. But when he said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me, he's referring to that we need to begin to make decisions to become like Christ, deny ourselves, our self will, and begin to go embracing God's will. That's what he's saying to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. That is not God's will. You're thinking about yourself. And I want you to think with me. Most of the decisions that we make in our life have to do with pleasing ourselves. They don't have to do with pleasing Christ, us becoming more like Christ. We should learn to deny ourselves in a very specific, focused way in our life. Now, Think of some of the things that you need to better deny yourself of. And let me get to where I want to go today. Probably for most listening or watching, food would be somewhere that we need to deny ourselves. Why are we overweight in America? We'd like to eat. It tastes good. 
and, 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 and I say this all the time, what do we do when we're bored? Eat. What do you do when you have a meeting? You go out somewhere to eat. What do you do when stress is put upon you? You eat. What do you do when you eat? See, that's not denying ourselves. That's pleasing ourselves. So we need to learn to pick up our cross, deny ourselves, get away from our will, and go to God's will. That's Matthew 16. I want to back up to Matthew 6. This is where I really want to go today. Matthew 6. In Matthew 6, verse 5 says this. And when you pray, you must not like to be the hypocrites. And, and then Christ goes through on the Sermon on the Mount, and he teaches them how they should pray. And when you pray, what's it mean by and when you pray? I expect you to pray. And this is where people don't really want to talk about. Verse 16 of chapter 6 in Matthew says, and when you fast. We don't like fasting. Because fasting is hard. Fasting is denying yourself a physical food so that you can feed yourself spiritual food. And the reason that I wanted to discuss this because I brought this to my staff earlier this week and asked them, what if all of us took a day and fasted together as a staff and every hour on the hour prayed? In other words, when you get up this morning, I got up at five. At right, 5 o'clock, pray. 6 o'clock, pray. 7 o'clock, pray. 8 o'clock, pray. 9 o'clock, pray. Pray every hour on the hour, all day long, and fast. I, I come up with this acrostic to share with my staff. What is fasting? F. It is you focusing on God. You're not focusing about what am I going to eat next? What, what, what's, what, no, I'm going to use this day, and I'm going to focus on God. A, I'm asking God. So what is the entire staff of Five Point fasting for? We're asking God to do supernatural things this weekend. We're begging God that our church will be inviting machines. We're begging God that he will bring in thousands of people by us inviting. We're begging God to do supernatural moves, life change. F, you focus on God. A, you're asking of God. S, you're submitting to God. Fasting does not come natural. I've done a couple 30-day fast. I've done 10-day fast. I've done, and when people say fasting's awesome, whoo, I'll tell you right now, you get that day 7, 10, 20, 25, you can really focus on God. You can begin to really ask God, but you've got to learn to submit to God because it's tough. And then T, you totally are trusting in God. When you submit to God, it's different than just trusting in God. And you're trusting in the God to supply everything you need to make it through this fast. And here's the truth. One day should be nothing. But for the majority of you listening today, you've never fasted one day. And I'm going to ask you, would you do exactly what the Bible says, Matthew 6, 16, and when you fast? And he goes on to say, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, do, 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 do. But he's saying, I expect you to fast. So would you just join in and fast with us? I mean, you've already ate something today. We'll fast tomorrow. It doesn't matter. we got several of us that are fasting a day or more, and we're asking God to do supernatural things. And when I fast, anytime I fast, I read the Bible more, I sing more, I pray more. Why? I'm focusing on God while I'm asking of God while submitting to God, while trusting God. So I'm going to ask you, would you be willing to fast one day? You'd be amazed at how when you fast, you're drawn closer to God because you're relying on God. So what's the point? Man, I'd love to see a bunch of people getting together, fasting, begging God to do supernatural things this Easter weekend. Don't forget, we have a service Saturday night, 7 p.m. We have our normal three, 8.50, 10.15, and 11.45. Make plans to be here, and please bring a friend with you. See you this weekend. <laughs>